Amen? Because she wants the life of God living inside her soul. This is the compartment of the soul. Stay with me, please. This message is, this is, this is, if there's ever a message I preach, and I say, I've said this before, this is the most important thing. This is eternal life right here. This is, a, this is what separates the foolish from the wise virgin and everything else. To say you're a part, you say you're a part of him. Judas was, hey, Judas was like, hey, I got the Holy Ghost on me. He preached the gospel. He did all those things. He talked to talk. He walked to walk till finally he came to, came to Pentecost to receiving the Holy Ghost. He couldn't do it. He didn't want to go all the way. God have mercy. You don't want to be Judas. You want to be Peter. If you're a Peter right now and you denied him and you're battling, you're, 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 may God get you to that place. Because Jesus told Peter, after you're converted, you're converted. Now think about that. Peter had the Holy Ghost dwelling. He, I mean, he walked with Christ. He had the Holy Spirit right there working in his life. He got revelation that thou art the Christ. And he didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. So you could be getting revelations. Amen? God would be revealing his word to you. Again, I want to try to teach this. I don't want to... I'm, Lord, help me. I, I'm trying. I don't know, Lord, this is just... Have your way, Lord. The Holy Ghost... It, he'll reveal himself to you, but it doesn't mean you have the Holy Ghost yet. And I hope God help me help to, to convey this. Now, let's continue. He says here, You'll know. He said, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. So when you got the Holy Ghost, you love his word. You want to follow his word. You love him. And when you see you when you fall, when you sin, oh, it just tears your heart out. You're grieved. You go right away, you're going to repentance and asking the Lord to forgive you. Hallelujah. Now, he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not as not as scary, there's another Judas here. Lord. How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto, thyself unto us? I mean, how is it? What, how is this? You're going to manifest yourself to us. How, how is this going to be? And not, but, but, the not, but it's not going to be into the world. The church ain't going to catch it. The church member, the religious church member, how are they not going to experience this? The, the governments, the world in general, I mean, how are they not going to know what, what, what's going to, what, does, what is this going to be? Because you're going to, you know, the, the, my church... I feel the Spirit of God there. I feel, well, how am I going to know? What is it? What is it, Lord? And he says here, Jesus answered said to him, If a man love me, if a man love me, if a woman love me, it says man, it means man and woman, he will keep my words. You can't reject the word of God. You can't do it. And my Father will love him. And we will come unto him. See, there's, there's, there's a walking in truth. There's a keeping his word. There's a loving him and following his word that leads you to receiving the Holy Ghost, that experience. And he says, then when we will make our abode, our, our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. We'll hold on to their false teaching churches we talk about over and over. We'll, 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 we'll defend their Trinity water baptism, their Trinity teaching, and the, and the mother of harlots, and they'll do all those things, and they'll, 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 they'll hold on to their, to their watered-down translation Bibles, and they'll just hold on to these different things. They'll reject that God sent a prophet. They rather listen to their, their uh, Freemason preachers on, that are on TBN, all that garbage. But he says, you know what? And the word which, which you hear is not mine, he says, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, but being yet present with you, but the Comforter, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So it could be there comforting you. It could be there dwelling in your life as he is. He's dwelling, he's working in your life. But he wants to abide in you. 
whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, hallelujah, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now John 16, verse 19. Now Jesus knew that they were, they, that they were desirous to ask him. And he said unto them, Do you inquire among yourselves of that, of that I said, A little while and you shall not see me? So he just said, you know, a little while you shall you'll see me not. And again, a little while you shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep. Now listen to this. You shall weep and lament. But the world, the world shall rejoice, he says. Oh, who, who was rejoicing? Remember that again? Who was it again? The church. The Pharisees and Sadducees were having a heyday. We got what we wanted. We got Rome, Pontius Pilate, to agree to his death. All oh, the world was having a good old time. Amen? And he says, you're going to weep and lament. Because I've been taken from you, he says. They took my life on the cross. And at that moment, you're going to weep and lament, thinking, wow. They took our Lord. They took our Savior. They took, they took the, the I Am right there. God made flesh. He's gone. <laughs> no, He wasn't. He rose from the dead and then manifested Himself only unto His disciples then, just to them. Amen? Now, He says here, Verily I say unto you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your joy, <laughs> your sorrow, I'm sorry, your sorrow, your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Amen? Hallelujah! That's what the Holy Ghost does! Amen? It, when you get the Holy Ghost, that's when your life is changed. That's when your sorrow turns to joy. Amen? That's when all this, this, this weeping and this brokenness of this life turns to a joy. Hallelujah. When you receive the Holy Ghost. Folks, I received it when I was 18 years old. I'm 45. And I've been through a lot. I've been through two, two Jezebel marriages. Two women who shook my life upside down. I've been through a bankruptcy. I've lost my mother. Tragically, I've lost my dad. I've lost a brother's suicide. I've gone through ups and downs and all these things. But that joy has never left me, amen? That joy, unspeakable, the joy of the Holy Ghost has continued to guide me and lift me up through all that I've been through, amen? It's given me the strength to keep enduring the, the persecution and people running their mouths and the things I've dealt with in the past almost two years of preaching this gospel, amen? The things that I've gone through to down to so low in depression as humanly speaking, a situation, something I never had never gone through, but that joy, that that same that Holy Ghost lifts me up, sends two ministering angels, puts me before His throne in a supernatural experience that I can't explain. That's what it does, Amen. Praise God, Hallelujah. I got something here more. Oh, I got. So, I'm just so excited right now. Woo, Hallelujah. Let's take a little drink. Oh man, there's so much goodness, God, he, folks. He's got something so good for you. That's why I'm asking the Lord, Lord, this is about the people. This is not about me. This is about the people. God, I know what I know the hour we're at. Folks, we're in a late hour. It's so late. And, and, as, a, and as a minister of the gospel, when you're laboring with the Lord, and you bring these messages, and I labor, while you are, many of you are maybe working and busy doing things, God's got me in a position to labor for your to labor for to labor for my king, for his people, to bring you his word and, and the warnings of God and how late it is, folks. I'm telling you guys. That's why I cry out to God, God, please. Give us a moment, give us a meeting. Let, let people, let the people who want the Holy Ghost, who truly want, who truly want Christ, may something happen. May they show up. May, may you give something for them, Lord, to be able to take place, Father. Amen. Now, hold on a second. I 
I rearranged my my basement and I have a piece of workout equipment going over there and I have a, a little nostalgic arcade game called Centipede and it was on and it was distracting my mind. I don't want nothing distracting me when I'm preaching. It, it, it disturbed the Holy Ghost. Lord forgive me, I didn't. It's off now. Now, anyways, now. Oh, I can hear Jezebel right now. Oh, I just heard her talk. Oh, I hear her talking all the time. <laughs> Amen. Now, now, let me get back to where I was at here. Then shall you weep and lamb, but he said, but your, your sorrow shall be, shall be turned into joy. Amen. The joy of the Lord is, being, is, is our strength, guys, which comes through. That joy that God's talking about. There's people that say, they ask you, how are you feeling today, right? I feel depressed. You can be feeling depressed in spirit as a human being. You can be feeling sad with the world. Uh, you can be feeling happy, right? Those are all emotions. But the Holy Ghost gives you that, that folks, that joy never leaves you. That joy, even in those past couple weeks, that joy had not left me. It was still right there in my soul. It was still, it was right there. But my spirit, my spirit, my flesh, and my, my human emotions were under a, a, a cloud. Amen? As, as we go through in our lives, but he, this, this is the joy that he wants to give you, is that joy that nothing, nobody, nothing can take it from you. It's having the Holy Ghost in your soul. Then it's not about emotions. It's not about feelings. No. It's just, it's the joy of the Lord inside you. And many women, many of these church-going women, many of these Jezebel anointed women run to that church and they, they, they're, they're looking for a high off of worship experience because they feel the comfort of the Holy Ghost. I understand. It's the same comfort the Holy Ghost that I feel when I want to listen to worship music. But they're not getting the spirit of truth. And they're not getting converted. And they're lost, folks. Judas never went on to get the Holy Ghost. He died lost. But he followed Christ. When I preach and I'm trying to teach, I want because I want to bring this as as quiet calmly as I can. But when I start, when I preach, what what, what I see, what where you're at, you people, you church members, and I see your condition that you're under, and knowing what 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 lays ahead for you, I am I've been screaming and crying out this past year and a half or more, like 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 knowing you're going to go over the fall, and you think you're saved but you're lost. But now. This is about those who want the Holy Ghost. This is about those who want to hear the truth of God's Word. And that's what this is about for me. Now, it says here, a woman, when she, a woman when she's in travail, Jesus says, has sorrow because her hours come, right? You women who've had children, oh my goodness, get a little sorrowful, right? Because you know it's time to go into labor. What's the first thing? Your water breaks. And then there's blood. And then that little life comes out. That little baby boy, little baby girl. As soon as that baby flops into your arms, ladies, you forget all about that pain, don't you? Amen? You forget all about that sorrow. Life, because birth, a birth took place. Remember that. The word birth. We're talking about a seal, a finished work. It ties into a birth, okay? Now, it says here that she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world, life. Now stop there. I want to interject this. John chapter 3. Jesus and Nicodemus. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto thee. He goes right to the heart. He doesn't start saying, hey, Yeah, you know, yeah, that's true, I do. No. He just goes right direct, because the Holy Ghost is direct. And I want to bring something out. I don't know if I did I miss my point earlier. 
Hope I didn't miss a point here when I was studying the other day. I'm on here. Okay, let's continue. Maybe it's coming up here in a minute. Now, because it's something I read. I don't know if it's in my scriptures or not, but but the Holy... The, Jesus spoke in parables where there's a part in the scriptures where he said there will come a point in time. I don't have to. He speaks direct. The Holy Ghost is direct. It's direct. It looks you in the eye and it brings the truth. That's how the Holy Ghost works. Spirit of truth. Now, he says here, Except a man be born again, he cannot see. That word see means understand. He cannot understand the kingdom of God. Okay? So now you can have the Holy Ghost dwelling on you. You can be filling the Holy Ghost. You can be getting some revelations from God and God is showing you and teaching you things. But you can't truly understand the kingdom of God until the Holy Ghost is born inside your soul. You can't. You can't. You can listen to all the greatest teachers. You can intellectually get a lot of this right here. You can intellectually explain a lot of things. Amen? But until you get the Holy Ghost, you cannot understand the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man, saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? He's thinking naturally, right? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? <laughs> Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water, I'm going to break this down here, and of spirit. And of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must, you must be born again. The wind, Now, remember he talks about birth. We're talking about a minute ago about a woman having a child, right? Okay? He said you must be born again. Remember these things. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm painting my picture. I'm trying to explain to you what the new birth is. Okay. So a baby comes forth naturally. Water breaks. Blood. Then the life. He said you must be born again. He said of the water and of the spirit. Now, marvel not that I said unto you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. You can go outside tomorrow. Whenever this message. You know, this is, you know, you all know what I'm talking about? When the wind blows, can you see it? No, but you can feel it. You can feel, it's, you can feel its effects. You can see what it does to the trees. You can see the effects of what it can do around you. It can bring a nice cool breeze into your house on a summer day, but you can't see the wind, right? He says here, Well, now here's the sound thereof, but you cannot not tell when it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The Bible says this. It's right there in the Word. Look it up. We are born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the Word of God. So being under the preaching ministry, those who preach the complete true Word of God, that's what produces the new birth in your life. All these other preachers that you're trying to, you're, 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 you're quit running from the Holy Ghost. You got it. Remember the one, the, what's it said back here a minute ago? Um, she's no more in anguish. So there's a, you got to go to anguish. It's until that birth takes place. You got to wrestle and fight and battle, folks. You got to anguish with God. Amen. You got to enter in to, to get that Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, let's continue here. Thank you, Lord. Now, the word wa the water, the, the, when we take a okay, water spirit, right? Water literally is as, as stated over and over. Now, that word water, I went and looked at the original Greek, um, Greek 5204. It's, this, it's, it's what it is. It's basically, it's, this, it's when John baptized Jesus. When John was baptizing people, he used water. Okay? The apostles were baptizing in water which is a representation of, of washing, cleansing of the sins, and so forth, right? Will John say, a baptism of repentance, okay? But it was a preparation to the Spirit. We're going to teach that more, okay? So, you've been baptized correctly. You've been baptized, you've repented, 
You've, you've accepted Christ as your Savior. You've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you've, you're born of the water. You've come, that you've come God's way. The Holy Ghost dwelleth with you. He's working in your life, right? Okay, okay. Now, let's continue. Because in my story, God dealt with me. I was a church in Indiana, Hagerstown, Indiana. Evening Light Tabernacle. My dad used to go with my dad. He would go to church there every Sunday. And the Holy Spirit one finally dealt with me one day as I turned 18 in April. And uh, sometime, maybe a couple weeks later, um, I said, Dad, I just, I just, I, God's given me, given me a revelation. I want to go get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I did. And I remember lifting my hands up, praising the Lord. But I didn't have like this supernatural, you know, experience, right? I received the Holy Ghost many, many months later by feeding on the true Word of God. Listening to those who preach the same gospel that I, that I, the same gospel that I'm preaching, the mess, the, 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 I was listening to Brother Random's ministry. I was feeding on those tapes. At the time, I didn't have internet. I don't think so, no. I mean, we didn't have it in my house. So I had all the tapes. I had a big old shelf and all those tapes. But also, I was listening to other preachers who preached the same message. Uh, you know, I was, I was going to a church to believe, you know, I was, I was surrounding myself around the true word of God. A preacher out of Tennessee, listening to him. All those things, just digging in the Word, going out in the woods, seeking the Lord, taking my Bible. I just kept digging in the Word of God, listening to the true the message of the, the messenger that God sent, those who are preaching in that same message, and it produced an experience one night in my room. It was the night that I received the Holy Ghost in the compartment of my soul. And folks, I had the Holy Ghost dwelling with me all along. But something in me changed. I'm telling you. There's, there's an experience now. And there were things, that for me as an 18-year-old young boy then, there were things that he made me, I, I gave up then. You know, I didn't, I, by the grace of God, I didn't have, I didn't, you know, he didn't let me get, I didn't, wasn't smoking cigarettes, I wasn't a drinker. You know, God kept his hand on my life pretty, pretty tight. For obviously for a reason, as this ministry he's called me to, but uh, that's what, truly what I believe in my heart. But that's my story. That's my testimony. Okay, but uh, there are certain things that God showed me to let go of that I had to go to battle. I had to to, to get rid of. I had to deal with to get to it to get me to a place of receiving the Holy Ghost. And you're not going to take the cigarettes with you in that experience. You're not still smoking. You're not still drinking and chewing, chewing tobacco and gambling and doing all those things. You ain't got the Holy Ghost on the inside yet. It's not coming to the compartment of your soul. You're still, the Holy Ghost is dwelling with you. You're, you're, in, the, you're in the stage and in the, in the moment. You're in sanctification mode, okay? And we're going to break that down. We're going to show you. Because remember, we're talking about a birth. We're talking about a mother giving birth to a baby. We're talking about the water, blood, spirit. And Jesus saying, yes, you accept you be born again. It'll come the same way, the way you were naturally born, that now in the spiritual realm, because God, it all ties together, folks. It'll be a threefold work, amen? It'll be the same thing again that produces a new birth, amen, that these churches don't preach about. Folks, I've been in a lot of churches, and it's full of a bunch of lost people. Yeah, a bunch of people who think they're saved, and they're not even saved. They go to church. They feel the Holy Ghost. They prayed that little prayer of salvation. They got justification. And as they stopped right there, that's because the pastor, the churches aren't preaching the complete word of God to produce the new birth. And that's what's on my heart. The, 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 the manifestation of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost changing your life. Okay? Now, also, now we look at the word spirit. It's, it's the same word that's when it's used about being baptized by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is saying you're going to be born of water and of spirit. So there's that, there's that, as like it says, you're getting baptized, you're coming his way. Acts 2.38, all through the book of Acts. But then there's the spirit, which is that fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost into Christ Jesus, which is the new birth. 
It's the finishing. It's the seal. We read that quote earlier. Now, that word spirit, let's just read a few verses. Matthew 3, verses 11. And when it says the word holy, when the word ghost, it's the same word. Indeed, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That's John saying. The water. I'm going to take you under the water. It's a, unto repentance. You're coming. Lord, I repent of my sins. I want to be baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to identify with your life. I'm coming up. Amen? You're on that road, folks. Amen. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen? Also, amen. Water in the Spirit. Water in the Spirit. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12. Verse 13, that same word used again in the word when it says spirit. For by one spirit, for by one spirit, we are all baptized. Folks, that's a fire baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's not just going under the water. It's being baptized into Christ. It's the soul being changed and converted on the inside of the inside. Amen. We're all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink to drink into one spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Receiving the Holy Ghost. That's when you're saved. That's the new birth, folks. I mean, folks, this is a sad thing to think about. And this has happened. I think, I, I have have my mother, I think, where a baby can be born, I think it's called stillborn, right? Uh, I, t scientific, technical word. A woman can have the water break in the blood and then that baby be born dead. Folks, it, 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 until, the, until you got the Holy Ghost, your spirit, you're not there. You have to be born again, which is the Spirit of God. You can have all those two other parts going on, but you've got to receive the Holy Ghost, which is the life of God. Amen. Now, I want to throw something in here. I want to read out my Bible here. So we were down earlier. Let me. Uh... Let me go over to uh, go to uh, John, chapter two. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. Do you love him? Because he loves you. This is all about his love for you. And, and I want to plan, again, I said a meeting. And uh, we want this whole thing being about you all d d getting the Holy Ghost. If there's people who haven't been baptized yet, we'll baptize you. And literally in the water, water and spirit, amen? But I want something special set up for the Lord. To my heart. Now, okay, John chapter 2, verse 1. Okay, here. Okay, one, one through eleven. I love this. And in the, the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they were when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman. <laughs> see, see, Christ. They're thinking natural. Right? That's what you all, many times, that's what you're caught up in. You're thinking too much in the natural. But the Holy Ghost is always thinking spiritual. He's like, woman, <laughs> what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come yet. It's not my moment to go to the cross, die, resurrect, and send the wine, the Holy Ghost, back upon my disciples, back upon the church yet. Woman, what is my hour is not come yet? It's spiritual, folks. Catch it. His mother saith unto the servants, Hey, whatever he saith unto you, do it. Hallelujah. Ma, his mother, Ma, mom recognized the gift in her center. <laughs> she recognized the Holy Ghost. Amen. She bore, she carried. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, I'm going to get off that. Let's <laughs> Hallelujah. I miss you, Mom. Amen. Now, but she's with us. She's with, I mean, the experience I had last Monday, you know, with my brother Mike, it's just, you know, Man, you, you don't realize how much you love your brother, you know, and watching Bill go through his thing and then him, him, you know, got what God's done for his life and, and, and what God's doing in my brother Mike's life. I am just, uh, we almost lost him. And, and, and it was just amazing to see what the Lord did. And my mom showing up right there in the house. Y'all seen it. It's on my channel. I talk about it on the uh, Friday Night Experience. 
And uh, that experience that I had, you can call me crazy all you want. That's okay. They called Jesus crazy. I said he had a devil. <laughs> now, anyways, we're not gonna, we're not thinking about the Jezebels in the church running their mouth. The world. I, I'm speaking to. This is about the people that I love. Now, and God, let me say it with this. I could say something. Now, his mother saith unto the servant, Hey, whatsoever he saith, do it. You do, you do, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out nigh now and bear it to the governor, unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it, okay? When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made, wine, and knew it not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, and the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And he saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And, then, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now. So he said, you know, what, whatever, whatever the men were producing, the church, the world, the condition, what these men were producing were producing wasn't good wine. But boy, you saved the best for last. <laughs> he saved the best, the best for last for you. That's what's on my heart. I want to see his people receiving that Holy Ghost experience. That's the wine. Folks, the wine, wine, what's wine do to you? It stimulates you. What's alcohol do to a person naturally? It stimulates them. They get drunk, right? The Holy Ghost, you get drunk. It stimulates you. It, the Holy Ghost, it then it takes, it gives you revelations. And those revelations that you get. And when you get the Holy Ghost, something in you, it just creates this, this drunk experience, folks. I'm telling you. Uh, you know, even uh, Brother Brendan, he, he told me the other day, I didn't realize, you know, he's been watching me preach off and on. He's like, man, Paul looks like he's drunk when he's preaching. That's, that's, that's the same way a drunk person, person acts. Folks, I've never drank. I've tried alcohol when I was 18, but I've never been drunk naturally in my life. But boy... I've been drunk in the Holy Ghost many, 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 many times. And there ain't nothing better. That joy, that's the joy He wants to give you, folks. He has saved the best for last. His Holy Spirit to give to, give to us now. So, you know, let me, let me finish this here. This beginning of miracles of Jesus and Cain of Galilee and manifested forth His glory and His disciples believed on Him. Amen. So now I want, to, I want to interject that. But now I want to take it over to uh, Acts chapter 2. We're talking about the wine. We're talking about receiving the Holy Ghost, folks. John, John truly baptized.